G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Gaijin is making the same mistakes over and over again. Every time we go to talk about battle ratings, we always end up talking about the same things, and of course, we're going to be talking about the same things again today. Gaijin has released some new battle rating changes, and I thought we might take a look over these things, but before we did, I think we should go over some key things that I believe about battle ratings. First of all, the battle rating system in general, I believe it is a solid system. I don't believe that it needs to be completely torn down and redone. Uh, not only is that too much work, but it also doesn't make sense. Like, what else would you replace it with? You can replace it with a tier system, but at the same time, the battle rating system does that with a couple more room for uh, a little bit of variation. Second of all, I think that overall, Gaijin has done an okay job of managing the battle ratings. I don't think that the whole thing is completely useless, like I said earlier, um, but especially at the top, at those sort of higher BRs, you get a fair amount of BR compression and you get a bit of uh, the change in doctrine of the change in attitude to aircraft and to uh, air combat seems to come through uh, and it becomes a little bit incongruous with the way that battle ratings work. You see, we have planes like the uh, F-4, which was originally designed to only carry missiles. We have several planes that are starting to involve missiles, and then when they finally figure out what they want to do with their missile combat, their gun combat, and of course the radar-guided semi-active radar homing missiles, uh, then they seem to just get everything, which includes uh, lockdown mode, uh, very strong missiles, good guns, good performance, flares, chaff, a uh, radar warning receiver, etc. So the planes that are sort of left in the intermediate between like the Shenyang F5 or the CL-13 Mark VI and planes like the EJ Kai, the J-37, things like that, in that in-between, uh, it's a little harder to balance them. Particularly concerning the ones that were designed for that interceptor role, that bomber interceptor role, uh, you can't really just give them their own niche role in the current system. And that's mainly what I'm concerned about. So without further ado, let's actually go on and have a look at these battle ratings. The first one that uh, I'd like to talk about here is the F-84s. Now the F-84s are going down in battle rating, the F-84B from 7.3 to 7.0. Now I'm not very fond of the F-84B and I don't think very highly of it, but I don't know if it should go to 7.0. Ladies and gentlemen, those of you that play the F-84B a lot, let me know. Uh, but every time I see an F-84B, it is not a particularly strong vehicle. I will also note that the F-84F, which is not on this list at all, is not changing in battle rating and I believe is loosely based on the F-84B's uh, fuselage. They've just swept back the wings. And uh, the fact that it's not going down, I believe it still sits at 8.3. It's a bit of a travesty to me because I despise this plane, but I really, really want to enjoy it. The F-84F looks really cool. It seems like it's a bit of fun in the right situations, but I always get paired up against MiG-15s and Sabres and G91s, and there's nothing you can do against them. You're slower than them, you accelerate l less than them, and yet we are at a stage where these planes are not being addressed, and I don't understand why. Maybe we'll get to that in a little bit. So the next two changes are both F-89s, that is the premium uh, F-89B and F-89D are both going down in battle rating. The F-89B going from 7.7 .7 to 7.3 and the F-89D going from 7.3 to 7.0. Remember the F-89D was the one that caused a lot of problems with those uh, rockets or those, those uh, unguided air-to-air -air rockets with the uh, timed fuse. They were quite an issue and I think we may see a return of the F-89B spam again. This is again not good for the matchmaker because the matchmaker does not suit these things very well. You have uh, 262s, you have a lot of these types of vehicles that will get absolutely chewed up by the F-89D. It's meant to be a meme plane, it's meant to be a plane that does not perform well but is fun to use. And the F-89D has to be at 7.3 or 7.7 .7 because there is no other good place for it. It is well performing. It turns decently well, it has good altitude performance, and its weaponry is exceptionally good. So by putting it at a lower battle rating, you're going to risk putting it up against those things that uh, it really shouldn't be facing. Especially props. 6.3 props. I mean, there aren't that many, but you know, you're just putting another nail in the coffin. 
As for the F89B, I find it perfectly capable at 7.7, .7, and even in a full 8.7 up tier, you can still do things against things like the MiG-15. The uh, plane is fairly capable, it's got excellent armament, and uh, I would honestly just call it at that. It is a really good plane, but it's a little difficult to use. It can be a bit of a bust, and when you get damaged, it is not fun to use, but I think 7.7 .7 is a much better position for it, because at 7.3, you're going to put it against things that are constantly going to be... Uh, being outclassed by it let's just say that so our next questionable change is right after it the vampires that is all of them across the board a26b vampire fb52a and vampire fb5 all going from 7.7 .7 to 8.0 i thought i might give the vampire another shot and um i have to say i did enjoy it but i was in a situation very often where everything could outrun me. Now the Vampire is a little faster than its competition at 7.0. Uh, it tops out at about 820 kilometers an hour, whereas some of the other planes top out around that like late 700 area. Um, but the Vampire will comfortably go to 850. So it is definitely a 7.7 .7 worthy plane. Uh, it is not an 8.0 worthy plane. There are plenty of other planes at 8.0 that will absolutely trounce it. Things like the LA-15, the LA-200, these are the planes that will outclass it, and they actually do outclass it, because they just have that ability to hold energy over the Vampire much better than others. I find that this change is a little bit questionable. Just because a jet turns well doesn't mean that it will always perform well. I understand that the average War Thunder player isn't as skilled as perhaps me, or perhaps someone else that you might know. Maybe, you know, they're no Deffens, they're no uh, Nagatos, they're no, like, super strong Ubermensch player like Coxie, but we need to sort of understand that it at this tier if you're just turn fighting or if you're just like turning and burning playing like an idiot then why are these statistics why are these players who are actively performing poorly when most of the time they know they shouldn't why is it ending up this way and i think we should sort of delve into this a little bit deeper but uh we'll move on for now so f2h2 8.0 to 8.3 i don't understand why. The F2H is not to be at the same battle rating as the MiG-15 non-BIS. Uh, the MiG-15 non-BIS is basically better in every way. The F2H2 is, I would consider it to be a solid 8.0. I don't even know where this number comes from. It's going from 8.0, 8.3. I, I, I don't know. The F2H Banshee is, to me, one of the most unremarkable planes in the game. Uh, I despise it with all my heart because it was my very first jet and I sucked in it, but that's beside the point. It does have decent energy retention from what I know, and of course it's got the good armament, but I really don't think it should be going to 8.3. I think I think that's a little much. So our next change here is the F86K. Now the F86Ks are all going down from 9.3 to 9.0. I consider the F86Ks more or less on par with the MiG-17F or the Shenyang F5 and the CL-13 Mark VI. Uh, I consider these planes all in the same bracket because they roughly perform within each other's envelopes. The F-86K has good altitude performance uh, and it also, it, it feels nice to fly. It's got good guns, it's got fairly easy to use guns, uh, it's got those same two missiles, it has a radar, and of course the, uh, uh, there's something about the performance that I, that I just quite like, although I struggle to put my finger on. I have plenty of good videos on this plane, um, often calling it a hidden gem. It also has an astronomically high repair cost for some odd reason, uh, but I don't think it should go down to 9.0. I think 9.3 is a good spot for it uh, because of its performance relative to its opponents. Now, speaking of performance relative to its opponents, the Lightning F6 is going down from 9.7 to 9.3. This puts it in the same bracket as the SU-7s, and I believe that this plane does come alongside the SU-7 quite well simply because it is a plane that is extremely hard to use. The Lightning does struggle in matchmakers where it is getting up-tiered, and this is where we start to run into that battle rating decompression, decompression or at least that, that need for battle rating decompression. Because at, at 9.3, you're going to be facing things that are as slow as 8.3s. That is, you know, the F2H Banshee or the F9F Cougar. These planes are very poorly equipped to deal with a Lightning F6 because it basically relies on the Lightning F6 to make absolutely every mistake in the book to get killed by one of these planes. Like, you are untouchable by these types of planes and that really makes me upset because the Lightning F6 I quite like, but I feel like this is the era 
where we're starting to see that compression really affect these planes. As I understand that the Lightning F6 was developed to intercept bombers, and then that's all good and well, uh, because a lot of the planes around this area were also designed in that manner. Uh, some were also designed for ground attack, like the Su-7, not, not the Lightning F6 of course, not a ground attacker in the slightest, but the Su-7, rather, uh, is a con considered to be a ground attacker, um, and it was considered to do it poorly. Um, no bomb load, you know, mediocre performance, all that type of thing. Uh, and now we have it, all these 9.3s that are almost Mark II capable. Lightning F6 is theoretically Mark II capable. The MiG-21 is theoretically Mark II capable. Um, I would call these planes sort of Mark I in a straight line at sea level, or at least uh, 1250 kilometer an hour on the deck. These types of planes are very poorly suited for 9.3. Just thinking about that top speed, 1250, 1275, the Lightning can even push 1300, uh, and the planes next to it, or even at the same BR, are 1100 at best. And for me, I see this huge discrepancy as quite an issue. Despite the fact that the Lightning is really difficult to play, it is paired at 9.3 and 9.7 with a couple of other planes that are extremely difficult to use. So what I would like to see in this area particularly are all these planes that are really tough to use, or alternatively other planes that are not so tough to use but don't quite have the same envelope of performance like the F100D to be put all at 9.7 and to sort of flourish there. Because I can see this type of battle rating being that, you know, last gunfighter type era where you're looking at these really, really clean, quick shots because you don't have much ammo to spare, you don't have um, much endurance, you have to fly extremely well and the planes are not particularly forgiving. So if you throw all of them at this battle rating together, at like 9.7, 10.0, 10.3, 10.7, you end up with this sort of area where everyone has to be really on their game to perform well. And so you'll get this sort of discrepancy. You won't get a, a wave of players just sort of dying because if you, as an average player, pick one enemy, single them out, and then dump all 200 rounds of ammunition on them and kill them, you only get one kill. Whereas say with a plane like the F100D, you could just sort of use that average performance and use that average flight envelope to go and do your thing and you don't need as much sort of tra hair trigger skill. But just by working methodically, there are ways to circumvent that issue. And having both of those options there at that battle rating that's separate from all the other subsonic planes that will not even touch these things. I'm talking MiG-19, I'm talking Su-7, uh, English Electric Lightning, uh, the PFM, the MiG-21F, um, the T2 even, maybe that can sit at the higher a areas, the F-104A, all of these types of jets that have that really tight flight envelope can all sit at these higher battle ratings. And this is kind of what I envision because I, I see this as the best way forward for the battle rating system. It's opening up, once again, that era of flight that was so so narrow in its in its in its reach and for me this would be really really special because you would have so much so much like skill so much hair trigger performance or alternatively you would have that ability to just methodically go about whatever you're doing and i see that as such a, a an avenue that gaijin's just completely mixed and they've just inside in, instead decided to go for band-aid fixes and I, I really despise that because the band-aid fix works for a little bit and then you uh, give it a wash and then the band-aid goes away and you're still left with an open scab uh, or alternatively in this case you're left with a bullet wound because uh, this is a pretty major mistake here the lightning started at 10.0 and is now at 9.3 same as the MiG-21s and the SU-7s are not far behind I feel like these planes do not suit that lower tier matchmaker. What, what needs to happen with these is instead of pushing them progressively lower to the point where now they're untouchable, they need to go higher and everything else above them needs to go higher as well. And what that will do is striate the matchmaker a little bit better and give you that beautiful era of low ammunition, tough to fly, but extremely rewarding if you decide to put the time in. 
And of course, you don't need to even be a part of that era to get to the next tier. There are plenty of premiums that sit below that tier and plenty of premiums that sit slightly above that tier. Things like the SPSK and the uh, MiG-21S sit in that tier towards the higher end and that is where you store your premiums. That's where you put your premiums or at the alternate end, the lower end. That 8.7, that 9.0, you know, G91R, MiG, uh, Shenyang F5, all those types of things. And I, and I see a real opening for that sort of stuff, but it looks like Gaijin either doesn't see it, doesn't care. I don't know. Ladies and gentlemen, moving on, we have the F-105D. This is a good change. I'm glad to see the F-105D finally, finally going up to 10.0 from 9.7. It's one of those planes that is 1300 on the deck with no attachments. And uh, it, it, it just does not fit that matchmaker. It genuinely doesn't fit the matchmaker. So what we need to do again is keep doing this. The F-105 is a good start, but it needs to be continuous more needs to happen in this regard and then I think we can finally get a, uh, a little bit more clarity. We have both F-104Gs going from what 10.3 to 10.7 I consider that to be a decent change and of course the F-104J going from 10.7 to 10.3 but these changes are from uh, another sort of symptom of the matchmaker being overly compressed. I know I harp on about this a lot and I understand that there are issues when you do decompress the matchmaker. I understand that, you know, not everyone's willing to wait an extra five minutes or an extra two minutes for a queue time. But that small, small concession will soon be taken back and brought to uh, very nice short queue times once again. I seriously think that this is the ultimate solution to this type of thing. If you push, say, the EJ Kai, the J37, the MLD, the F4J up a BR step, the F4E up a BR step, the MiG-21 BIS up a BR step. I think we have on our hands a really solid matchmaker. All it needs is one or two steps. Just open up that gap a little bit more so that these planes that are poorly put in the matchmaker, you know, Lightning, SU-7, MiG-21F, MiG-21 PFM, these planes need that step. They need that little area there to flourish because otherwise they're being trampled on by 10.3s and by 10.7s. And that's where the issue is coming from. These 10.3s and 10.7s are getting down tiers and they're crushing these planes because of the difference in performance. If you step these 10.3s and 10.7s up to 10.7 and 11.0, the 10.7s and 11.0s will get crushed by the 11.0s and the 11.3s. Stack them up to 11.7 and 11.3, then you have a little bit of breathing room. And once the breathing room happens, you'll see the matchmakers start to flourish. This is what happens when you cram too many planes into such a small matchmaker. I remember maybe years ago, Gaijin cited one of the reasons for lack of decompression being the diversity of aircraft. Well, I see what Gaijin doing here to be killing the diversity of aircraft. Because now you're making fewer and fewer aircraft viable, so fewer and fewer aircraft are going to be played. And instead, you're going to have a matchmaker full of homogenous aircraft that all share similar characteristics, similar armament, similar radar and other functions like that. And you're not going to have that diversity that you so wished that you had originally. Opening up the matchmaker will open up everything you could possibly want about War Thunder. It would have every fighting style. It would have every plane, at least most planes, being at least somewhat viable. You would have plenty of room to put new additions. You would have plenty of room to give the old additions room to stretch their legs. Ladies and gentlemen, this will do it for today, but take away this. Battle rating decompression is our solution. It's the best thing that we have at our disposal. And all it takes is one or two steps. Maybe three. Maybe three. But I seriously think one or two would be heaps. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. If you would like to support the channel, 
head down to the link in the description below for uh, my Air Models link as well as my in-game decal. So if you do want to purchase something, you get 3% off and you get my in-game decal in-game and that goes a long way to supporting the channel. For those of you who don't have anything to spend, just leaving a like on the video, leaving a comment for the algorithm and, uh, you know, maybe telling your friends would do the best for me. But ladies and gentlemen, I, I'd like to thank you again for watching. I'll try and keep the content coming. Take care and I'll catch you next time.